epimorphine infusion should be used before surgical therapies are concerned? My position is no. Let's go ahead straight to uh, surgical therapies rather than using subcutaneous epimorphine infusion before. So when we are talking about the patients, who are these patients that are candidates for these therapies? And these are very similar patients, patients who have off time, patients who have troublesome dyskinesias, uh, patients uh, who, when they are off, might be having partial instability, freezing of gait when they're off, having dystonia when they're off. And of course, these are beginning to impair their activities of daily living. One thing we don't go for is purely nighttime disturbances, but often these patients also have nighttime disturbances. So I'm going to start my argument by showing that DVS therapy is better than best medical therapy, whatever way we look at it. And this was one of our early studies that was done comparing best medical versus DVS. Patients were randomly assigned to one of these. And after six months, it was looked at which was better. And here looking at patient diaries, and if you look at it on without troublesome dyskinesia was better with DBS. Uh, troublesome dyskinesia was reduced with DBS. Off time was better with DBS, uh, except sleep. So again, with patient diaries, motor fluctuations were better with best medical therapy significantly. Next, if you look at the UPDRS scales, activities of daily living, better. Patients who are taking no medication or less medication again, were more with DBS therapy than with medical therapy, and finally looking at reduction of motor fluctuations or dyskinesias. What about quality of life? Well, again, if you look at the PDQ39, uh, overall patients did better with medical therapy, I mean, uh, with DBS therapy, but if you look at the subscales, mobility, activities of daily living, emotional well-being, stigma, cognition, communication, bodily discomfort, again, all were better with DBS compared to best medical therapy. This was a study done in Germany, very similar, except they used pair randomization. One patient got DBS, one patient was on medical therapy. And again, at the top is the PDQ39, again, favoring neurostimulation over medication. At the bottom, again, showing patient diaries, better with DBS versus medication. Let's look at another study. Again, I'm not going to go over it in general. Let's look at one slide that is different at the top. Improvement occurred right away with neurostimulation and stayed better at even 24 months compared to medical therapy. Again, PDQ39, again, patient diaries, better with DBS compared to the best medical therapy. And often the best medical therapy includes uh, subcutaneous epimorphine infusion. This is another one, a shorter time period showing you at three months. Again, whether you look at the good on time, better with uh, DBS compared to not turning the stimulation on. Total UPDRS scores, activities of daily living, motor scores, reduction in levodopa. Again, better with DBS compared to uh, medical therapy. Well, often we talk about, well, the best improvement you get with DBS is their best on. Well, that's not true. We are better than the best on. So the thing is that DBS is the best therapy out there for Parkinson's, even better than levodopa, because in spite of all their medications, in spite of every medical therapy, tremor is by far better. And here you see in the patients on state, yes, you see ADLs are better, motor is better, Bradykinesia scores are better, rigidity is better. You may argue with me, well, at their best on, nothing is better, but one cannot argue that tremor is by far better than 80% compared to best medical therapy. And here on another study that I'm showing you, very similar improvement. And what you saw is improvement, not only in their rest tremor, but also action tremor that occurred both with subthalamic stimulation and thalamic stimulation from that standpoint. So what about just comparing these two? Well, there have been very few studies that have actually compared uh, continuous subcutaneous epimorphine infusion versus DBS. But again, when you look at this small study of about 25 patients, the off time improved by close to 75% with DBS, about 50% with the infusion. However, dyskinesias, involuntary movements were 80% better with DBS. And of course, levodopa reduction 
was much greater with DBS compared to the infusion therapy. What about comparing another study which looked at the dyskinesias, not only the duration, but also the disability. So again, when you look at it with DBS, you had improvement. This is one year, this is the last follow-up, close to 75 to 90% improvement in the dyskinesia disability compared to epimorphine infusion, where you had 10 to 20%. When you look at the dyskinesia duration, again, close to 75 to 100% with DBS, less than 20% with continuous infusion. And again, in this study, when you compared the PDQ39 scores uh, in patients and also their off duration, again, significantly uh, better with uh, DBS compared to continuous subcutaneous epimorphine infusion therapy. Now, this study was done, which looked at not only STN, but also subcutaneous uh, uh, infusions of epimorphine, as well as carbidopa, levodopa, enteral suspension. And this study looked at the non-motor symptom scale. Uh, I'm going to point you down to the lower part of it, where you can look at the actual improvements that occurred. And especially if you pay uh, attention to the ones that are uh, put a bit stars up here or down here, you see sleep and fatigue improved, mood and cognition improved, uh, hallucination and perception improved, urinary issue, uh, issue improved, uh, sexual improvement and other improvement that was seen as compared to epimorphine where mood cognition, perception and attention were improved along with miscellaneous. But again, when you just look at the non-motor scales, you saw better improvement with DBS compared to epimorphine infusion therapy. What about patients who have been on subcutaneous epimorphine infusion? Do they get additional benefit after they go for DBS therapy? And again, here you'll see uh, down here looking at activities of daily living when they're in the off state, tremor, rigidity, bradykinesia, gait, partial instability, all improving even in patients who had epimorphine uh, infusion in the past. And the conclusions from the authors were in patients with advanced Parkinson's disease previously reliant on epimorphine, bilateral STN is effective treatment to reduce off time and enable a reduction of the epimorphine use. What are, looking at this cost utility model and predicting full-time carefree survival, and again, if you look at the DBS compared to best medical therapy where epimorphine would fall under and LCIG, again, you look at this, there's a much more likelihood that patients with other forms of therapy are going to require long-term care as opposed to patients who are on DBS. The other challenges with these infusion therapies is once a patient goes into a long-term facility, uh, they are not going to get the support of these infusion therapies. They cannot get this, but BBS, they can get it at any time. The other thing is if patient needs some assistance setting up these devices uh, every morning, again, they are going to require assistance to set this up. With DBS, once they have it, they don't need any additional uh, requirements at home to look at it. So why use CSAI before DBS, why not just go straight to DBS? Well, DBS is more effective than best medical therapy in improving motor symptoms, off time, and quality of life. Tremor improves with DBS even in the best on state. So even in spite of using all the current medications, tremor will improve better with DBS. So again, why wait? DBS is more effective than chronic subcutaneous epimorphine infusion in improving off-time dyskinesias, levodopa reduction, and the non-motor symptoms. And again, continuous subcutaneous epimorphine infusion is really not an option for long-term care and can need assistance to set it up. So that's why I say, why should we first use uh, an epimorphine subcutaneous infusion? Why not go straight to DBS? because it is still the most effective therapy we have today. Thank you.